last thing that I said is we came to the next great disaster and he was looking down at it. Not a canyon. The Great Salt Lake. Yes. I don't know. It looked even worse than it sounded. Mile upon mile of glistening white salt made him lick his lips in thirst. Beyond the eerie, salty shores lay the wastelands of the 40-mile desert. The wagon trail was the pits. Langsford Hastings was out of his mind to recommend it. Turn the page. Cheapers. The pioneers descended and found a freshwater spring just before the Salt Lake. A message from Hastings warned them of things to come. Hard travel two days and two nights across desert. No water or grass. Hastings must be returning on horseback to leave these messages, Virginia said. I guess he's worried about us, but I wish he, we never followed his advice. And his group doesn't have cattle herds like we do. Zeke studied the desert and shook his head. How will the herds ever get across this? We don't have a choice, Reed said, his voice flat. He'll, we'll fill the buckets with water and grass and make a run for it. We'll travel day and night, no stopping. Day after day, the sun burned down. The salt crust broke under the heavy wagons, and the wagon wheels sank into, the quick, into quicksand. Gee haw, Zeke cracked his, whip, his bull whip. Move! But the weary oxen didn't feel like moving. July to September, 1846, the Hastings cut off Utah. So how many months is that, July to September? July, August, September. Three months. By the fourth day, they'd run out of water. The miserable, thirsty animals bellowed. Here we are, Zeke murmured. He wiped the animal's tongues with a wet rag and shared his water canteen with Starboy, but he knew it wasn't enough. Animals laid down on the burning salt and refused to get up. On the fifth day, nine cattle dropped dead. Starboy looked at Zeke with trusting brown eyes. I should never have brought you on this crazy journey, Starboy, he whispered. Reed scanned the cloudless sky. I'll ride ahead and see how far into the, far it is to, the, to a spring. Make sure you take proper care of my herd, Cecil. Zeke scowled. Yeah, right. Reed's decision to take the Hastings cutoff had endangered them all. Reed drives me crazy, he muttered to Lemuel. You and me both, brother, Lemuel said. He looks, he thinks we're just stupid kids. Reminds me of my pa, Zeke said. They were watching the dark desert for Indians when Reed came galloping back. I found springs, Reed shouted. Freshwater springs, about 20 miles from here. Zeke's heart leapt. Great news, sir. Unyoke the oxen and drive them and the cattle there. We'll water them well. Then we'll bring the oxen back and fetch the wagons. Mind you keep the herd together, Cecil, Reed warned. Yes, sir, Zeke grunted. It would be nice if Reed trusted him to do his job by now without calling him out. He'd been working his butt off keeping the herd together for months. Reed rode away to the wagons to tell his wife the good news. Zeke and the Teamsters set to work, but things went terribly wrong fast. The minute they'd freed the herds, the animals charged into the dark desert. They smell the water, Zeke shouted, after them. But the cattle and oxen had disappeared. Reed's going to kill us, Zeke groaned. His whole herd is gone. You guys go ahead and search for them. I'll let him know. On hearing the news, Ze Reed let out a roar. Zeke felt awfully guilty. Those cows, char cows charged off like bats out of hell, he told the mule. Yeah. So that's an expression. What does that mean? Like if you were in hell, how fast would you leave if you got the opportunity? Like lightning. So they got took off real fast. That is an it's an idiom. It's a very popular one, actually. It's kind of crazy. Reed's roar would have made a mad bull proud, Lemuel muttered. Can't say I blame him, Zeke said. His whole herd is gone, and how's he going to pull his four wagons? Reed called out, Cecil, help Mrs. Reed with the children. We've hardly any water left. We'll all have to walk to the springs tonight. Hopefully we'll find the herd there. It's 20 miles to the springs, Virginia gasped. With Mrs. Reed and four-year-old Tommy propped on his horse, the boss marched off into the springs direction. Zeke lifted Virginia's eight-year-old sister Patty and little brother Jimmy onto Starboy's saddle. He and Virginia walked beside them while Zeke lugged the last small bucket of water. Five-year-old Jimmy wiggled around and start, stared at Patty. You've got your dolly in your apron pocket, he said. Pa'll be mad, he said. No toys. 
Dolly is not a toy, Patty pouted defiantly. Zeke grinned, so there was a Reed family rebellion going on. Even Angelic Patty was tired of being bossed around. He looked ahead to see if Reed had heard, but the rest of the family didn't turn around. As the bright moon rose over the shimmering white salt lake, he heard a strange sound, spooky music. As the bright moon rose over the shimmering white salt lake, he heard a strange sound, spooky music. What is that? He said. Virginia sound listened wide eyed. Spirits? Ghosts? It sounds like a piano, Zeke said. Who could be playing a piano? Oh, Virginia gave a hollow laugh. I know what it is. It's my music teacher's piano. I guess his wagon was too heavy for the oxen to pull and he's had to leave the piano behind. The wind will play it now. Or the Indians? Zeke looked into the night. The desert was filled with unexpected shapes. A rocking chair rocked to and fro. A cactus wore a leather hat to lighten their wagons. Pioneers had clearly abandoned things as they went. So what was playing the piano? The wind. So they had to, they had to abandon things. And when they did that, you know, like, yeah. Um, earlier, he and Reed had dug a deep hole to bury pots, pans, and clothing. The Indians will find it all the minute we're gone, he thought. The wind rose. Sharp granules stuck, struck Zeke's face. Soon, even his eyelashes were coated with sand and salt. He longed to tip up the bucket and take a drink, but it was all they had. A, wagon's creek, a wagon creaked to a halt behind them, driven by someone who'd had the wits to keep his oxen from running off. Zeke turned to see a dark shape leap down and stomp across the sand toward them. As he drew closer, Zeke recognized Snyder, a frontiersman with an arm of weightlifter. Then he saw the rifle, big, black, and pointed at his chest. He inhaled sharply. What now? Is Snyder the dangerous man I saw in that flash? Is this desert the white world I saw? 